Hey everybody, welcome to this week's edition of Why We Sing as we explore the reasons why we sing particular songs at Galilee Baptist Church. You, my God, have saved my soul. I hope that you all had a very enjoyable Easter weekend despite all the crazy weather and coronavirus uh, situation. I hope that you were still able to find some joy and some peace and some rest uh, during this wonderful time in which we celebrated the coming of our Lord and His resurrection. This week I want us to look at one of the more modern songs that we sing at Galilee Baptist Church and the salvation that we have in Christ Jesus. This week we're going to look at the song, Saved My Soul. Saved My Soul is written by the Australian worship group, City of Light. Now they've only been writing music since the year 2014, but they do a really fantastic job, not just in this song, but in all of their songs, of ascribing worth and praise to God. But also in this song in particular, talking about what exactly we were saved from, and also doing a good job of showing us the assurance of our salvation, that once Christ saves us, we are forever His and nothing will change that. The song actually begins with the chorus. It says, You, my God, have saved my soul. I am yours forevermore. I won't be moved of this, I'm sure, because you, my God, have saved my soul. This begins with a declaration a declaration of the assurance that we have in Jesus Christ, that once we are saved by Christ, we are truly His forevermore, and nothing will shake us of that. Just as we looked at the song of Because He Lives last week, and the assurance that we have because Jesus lives, He is better than all of the situations that occur in our life, we also have assurance that once we are Christ, once we are purchased by the blood of Christ, that we are His 100%, nothing will change that, and we have assurance that He will be with us always. Verse number one talks about our life before Christ, how we were held in chains by our enemy, how we were captors to our sin, and how we were just living a life of sin, and how we're, there's no way that we can get out of that. But the verse continues on to talk about how Christ defeated our captor. He defeated the sin and the chains that bound us to sin. And verse 2 goes on to talk about the joy and the hope and the peace that we have because of that. Because Christ came, our joy is now attached to Him. Our joy is not attached to our circumstances in this life and it's not attached to uh, any sort of emotion that we may feel. But our joy is solely attached to the finished work of Christ whenever He saves us. Verse number three then talks about the assurance that we have because of the life of Christ. Because Jesus came and broke us free from our bondage to sin, and because He is our source of joy and peace, we have an assurance that from now and through eternity, we are going to be rejoicing with the Father, that we are going to one day be with Him in paradise, glorifying and enjoying Him forever. And then the bridge of the song actually talks through the power of Christ. Once, what once was dead is now alive. You gave to me the breath of life. These lines show us just how powerful and how mighty the work of Jesus Christ was. Not only did he simply defeat death for himself, but he defeated death for us as well. We have new life. We are no longer dead. Our hearts are no longer hearts of stone. He has given to us life because of His life and because of His death. I want to give us three reasons as to why we sing this song together at Galilee. Reason number one is to thank God for the gift of salvation. As I've talked about a number of times and you have heard Brother Andrew and Brother Brian also say, we have done absolutely nothing to deserve the gift of salvation. Salvation is strictly because God cared greatly for His creation and our God is a God of grace. So we sing this song to thank Him for sending His Son Christ, which He did not have to do, so that we could have fellowship with Him and we could have friendship with Him. Reason number two is to give God the credit for our salvation. Far too often I think that we rely upon a decision that we had made or walking down an aisle or saying a sinner's prayer for our salvation when the real work of salvation is because of the Holy Spirit coming and convicting us of our sin. 
We sing this song to remind ourselves that the main part that we play in our salvation is the sinning and the running from God. God is the one who pursued us. God is the one who graciously reached out to us and sent us a means of salvation. Now you may have prayed a sinner's prayer or you may have, may have walked the aisle and have truly been saved, but that is not what saved us. God is who saved us because of the work of Jesus. And we sing this song to remind ourselves that Jesus is the means of our salvation, not just some decision that me or you have made in the past. Lastly, we sing this song to remind ourselves of the assurance that we have in our salvation. Jesus didn't come so that we could continue living a sinful life, but fully knew that we were going to continue falling into sin. But thank God that once we are His, that we are forever His. That our salvation is not dependent upon us being good people or dependent upon the good works that we do, but our salvation is solely based upon the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we praise God and thank Him for that, but we also have to continually remind ourselves that our salvation is not because of anything that we do. But our sal uh, the assurance of our salvation was done whenever Jesus died and rose from the grave. So we use this song to remind ourselves that once we are saved and once we are truly brought into the family of God, that we are His forever and nothing will ever change that. Thank you for joining me for this week's edition of Why We Sing. As we close today, I want to draw your attention to a verse that's found in the book of Acts. In chapter 4, verse 12, it says, and there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. As we come off of this Easter weekend, and I hope that you were able to find some joy and some rest, but I hope that even after this Easter weekend that you are able to understand the true gift that we receive because of Christ's life, because of His death, and because of His resurrection. We have salvation that lasts forevermore on this side of heaven and brings us into eternity. Thank you for joining me and I hope to see you all again soon. I won't be moved of this, I'm sure. You are my God and you save my soul.